Brief introduction. Um, oh, great. It's recording. Fantastic. Perfect. So uh, I'm Henry Harbo. Um, I'm a co-founder of an organization called Lumined, and I'm here with my co-founder, Prakash Fidel. Um, as a brief introduction, we were connected to this conference through Lucy Dre, who was my um, middle school computer science teacher at the University of Chicago Lab Schools. Um, and we reconnected. I'm now a senior at Oberlin College, and we reconnected recently because we're both doing work a lot around connecting classrooms around the world. She has run this fantastic conference called the Global Education Conference, it's similar to this conference, at least how it works. Um, and yeah, we, we've been doing this organization for the past two years since we were sophomores. Um, it's come a long way. We actually just got back from a pitch competition. Um, literally, the prizes were over 15 minutes ago, and we won um, a prize there um, and won some money, so that's been fantastic. That's why we're all dressed up and also for you guys. But we will, I guess, go through our presentation. Yep, it's a, it's a pitch uh, competition on campus um, in Oberlin. It's kind of their accelerator program that they run throughout the month of January that we've been participating in. Um, and we were in the venture uh, category. And so, yeah, we're really glad that we won that. Yeah, that's great. So we're still ecstatic from that, but we'll try to focus on this presentation because we're really excited to talk to all of you as well. Um, we met with Eric and some of the um, it, uh, administration, administrators of the Marymount School in New York uh, two weeks ago um, had a great discussion about what our program is, how we can connect different classrooms, including Marymount School and their entire sister school network across the globe. Um, our mission at Luminet is really about connecting classrooms and building cultural connections that allow students to kind of learn what it means to feel like being a student in a totally different country. Um, so. We'll talk to you about that, uh, and I guess we'll get started now. I guess yeah. for yeah, let's go for it. Yeah, so uh, for those of you who don't know, Luminet is a social venture that we started to connect classrooms around the world to each other, and we do this through our video pen pal program, as well as our smart projector, which allows us to reach any classroom, even those um, without access to the internet or electricity. Having some trouble with the slides. <laughs> Got it. All right, you got it. Yep. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's a that's a quick overview of what we do. So um, the problem we're really tackling. Yeah, exactly. Without electricity. Um, so the problem we're really we're tackling comes down to the one of a global connection, and we think that as the world becomes more interconnected, it's really important to, for students to be global citizens. And me personally, I was I was born in Nepal. I went to school in Bangladesh in India, and now we're both seniors at Oberlin, and the experience of meeting people from all different backgrounds really left me with, uh, you know, a fascination for the world, and it gave me a sense of curiosity and empathy that I think a lot of teachers have a hard time bringing into their classroom. Um, in the U.S., there's just no easy way for classrooms to connect with um, classrooms abroad, and for classrooms in the developing world, you know, 70% of them lack access to the internet, so such opportunities don't even exist for those classrooms. Uh, we wanted to develop a service that would work for all of these classrooms, and this is our video pen pal program. Um, the video pen pal program, basically, for the first time, we can create real connections on a consistent, you know, year-long basis between classrooms in the U.S. as well as classrooms uh, anywhere in the developing world, and kind of, uh, I think it would be best to walk you through an example of a connection so you can really get a sense of how it works. And just waiting on the slide. Um, so this is actually something um, that we've been doing for six months. This is an example from our pilot program. And this is uh, Michaela. She's a third grader from Detroit. And she's been sending videos back and forth with Nishu. She's a third grader in New Delhi. And right here, you can see them sharing their favorite books. But they've also shared you know, their favorite festivals, like Diwali and Christmas. And they've also talked about what they want to be when they grow up. So it's, it's a really exciting experience for both sets of students. It, it kind of, we, we like to think of it as bringing you know, different people, cultures, and countries all come alive in a way that we don't think textbooks really can. And so, so that's, that's the experience for students, but we wanted it to be an equally great experience for teachers. So we made it really simple for the teachers to manage the whole process and really focus on reaping the benefits of the program. So to do this, we developed a really simple app that makes it very easy to record, edit, and videos in just a few minutes. And 
teachers just need some sort of smartphone, you know, iOS or Android to be able to use this. But the other aspect of the problem is really not just reaching teachers in the U.S., but being able to connect them with teachers in the developing world. And to do that, we needed a completely new platform to reach classrooms that don't have smartphones or projectors. And we did that through our device, which is called the Bright Orange Box. And the box has a projector on the front and speakers on the back that allow it to play video in any classroom. Um, it's also got a camera and microphone on the back, which mean that it's great for video recording as well. Inside, it's got a large, large internal battery and a 3G chip. So the battery allows it to run for a long time, even if you don't have reliable electricity. And in the case that classrooms don't have any electricity, electricity at all, we do provide an optional solar panel for that. Um, so, so that's how we take care of the problem with electricity. For the problem with the internet, by having the 3G chip, teachers can use the existing 3G networks that are really starting to boom in India and other parts of the developing world. And the picture here you see is one of our um, Teach for India fellows we work with all over the summer and up until this point throughout the year for our pilot program. Her name is Joanna, um, and she teaches a second grade class. And so she just used this device. We talked to her afterwards, and she said she used it between one to three hours a day. She also shared with different classrooms within her school. So bringing this device to this community has been an enormously helpful resource for these teachers who struggle to have any sort of media in the classroom. A lot of them don't even have blackboards or whiteboards or things to write on. So when you have something that can project media onto any wall or any tree, for instance, you know, <laughs> it's an incredible resource for them, seriously. And it really helps them out um, and to improve their lesson plans. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, so with the pen pal program, by having this box in all of our classrooms abroad, they can use the exact same app experience that we provide for our teachers in America. So both sets of classrooms are really using the same solution, whether it's recording videos with their smartphone and uploading it to us, or recording videos with the bright orange box and then sending it to us through the 3G chip on the box. And again, for classrooms in the US, they have you know, access to a projector so they can watch the videos. But by having the bright orange box in classrooms abroad, they got the projector built in all in one package so that they can also watch the videos. And it's a really intuitive and um, the same experience for both sets of classrooms. And one of the most important features that we put into this application and this whole platform for communication is simplicity. There's a lot of you know, organizations that have tried to set up pen pal schools, you know, collaborating with written stuff and other things like that. But most of the time, it's, it really requires a lot of infrastructure. So constant connectivity to electricity requires expensive computer labs, or it puts the burden of managing the relationship on the teacher. So they spend you know, multiple hours a day or per week trying to figure out when the video is going to come in, what they're going to talk about. With our platform, we provide teachers with a, cons with a curriculum they can base their lesson plans off of. We also give them an app that's super easy to use. So it's literally the start of every Monday class. You just record a video. So we talk with your students about how to record the video, what you want to talk about. Record it, have a few edits, click upload. It's up to our servers. It's in the Indian classroom. And they'll do the same exact thing with the same exact app interface. And so it's leveling the playing field for video editing, uploading, and recording capabilities. Yeah, and exactly. It's really important that we can provide the same experience for both classrooms. It really makes the experience equally important for both classrooms. And so the, the other thing we realized is that by putting a bright orange box in any classroom, we can also bring the tools that come with the box. So the box is a great media device. You know, teachers, in, particularly our teachers in India, they found it really useful to use with videos, PowerPoints, or other, you know, music or other digital content. And just by bringing the box into the classroom, they have access to, access to this content. And, you know, originally we were, we were focused actually on providing this content ourselves, but with our pilot program, particularly with our Teach for India teachers that we work with, uh, we found that they like doing the content themselves and they have the idea for what they want to show. So just by providing the box, they're able to use new tools in the classroom that they wouldn't have access to before. Yeah, and Eric, thanks, thanks for the idea. I think really that's, that's another thing we're thinking of for the future with where students can not only be involved through this private video conversation, but they can share, you know, their, their, their ideas, but also like particularly for cultural aspects, they can share folk songs or things like that. Originally, one of the things we were thinking and 
um, something that we're thinking for the future is that particularly in India where there's so many languages, it can be a way to prevent languages from dying out when you can use the box to record it in any community and you know, the community doesn't have to be connected in any way. So yeah, it's, it's definitely an idea for the future and I think it, it's, it will definitely be worth exploring um, thanks to our box. And there was a question earlier that we missed. Um, the question was about curriculum and whether our program is focused on really a cultural connection or a more linguistic language development curriculum. So I want to address that. First, yeah, preserving language is huge, we agree. Yeah. Um, first, for our initial kind of phase when we first have these classrooms, it's going to be focused on a cultural connection. So pairing up U.S. schools with Indian schools, they talk about their similarities within the classroom, their differences in terms of culture, favorite sports, favorite foods they eat, um, their outside environment. Um, but in the future, as we branch this device to include other countries around Africa, South America, and Europe, we hope to bring language development programs to schools as well. So a student speaking French in the U.S. can communicate with a student speaking French in Senegal. And they can talk about, they can share English and French, go back and forth and talk about how they can improve languages and really build these curriculums up for different grade levels to match certain de levels of development for language development. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's really a great experience. So the next thing I think we want to kind of go, go into a bit more is um, how do we actually get these boxes in the classroom? Originally, before, before we had our pen pal idea, it was, we had a very difficult time getting the boxes in our classrooms in India because, you know, even though it's cheaper than any alternative, it's still really expensive for any low-income teacher. So how it works is we have our U.S. schools um, uh, sponsor the device for their partner school and they also pay an annual fee that helps them connect through the pen pal program. And what, these, what this means and what we've found from, you know, speaking to teachers and Eric and Lucy is that teachers not only value the pen pal experience, but they also value being able to bring, you know, bring learning tools to a classroom in need. So there's really the experience that they get as well as the philanthropic part and the experience they provide for these classrooms that don't have access to technology that we in the U.S. really have started to take for granted. Right. So it's a great role model for students as well. They can get involved in their communities. And actually, one other thing we're thinking about is having schools, in addition to being cultural connections, also sponsor extracurricular projects that students can get involved in their partner communities and find a way to fundraise to get a clean water source to, you know, the rural village they're talking to, do other things that are beneficial to the communities they're talking to. Yeah, and just to answer your question, Barbara, um, Right now, we're just doing connections between classrooms in the U.S. and classrooms in India, and the process of making the connection involves uh, figuring out what, what the teachers want to get out of the experience and then finding a teacher on the other side who has a similar sort of idea so that they can both ha they're both going into the program with a similar idea for what they want to get out of it, and we can then build the curriculum around it so it's a great experience for all teachers. So now the program, the presentation might shift to be more of a business focus. This is what we just pitched to a bunch of investors. So uh, bear with us as we talk a little bit about market size, but I think it has an equal application to seeing what our kind of social impact could be. Mm -hmm. There are 130,000 K-12 public and private schools in the U.S. Um, and so when you talk about, you know, how we're pricing our service within those schools, if we were to have classrooms among most of those schools in the country, there's about a $2.1 billion market. Um, so, again, that's a lot of schools. We have classrooms in all of them. That'd be great. But for the next few years, we're really focused on targeting, you know, progressive, you know, top-tier private schools. And they're the ones who have a mission to get cultural connections in the classroom. They want to teach their kids that have a global perspective. They agree with our mission. They have the funds to kind of be philanthropic with this. So it's a great way to target, you know, an initial market of the top-tier progressive private schools. And that's what we're going after for this year and the next year, probably. Um, but as we scale our operations more, we can actually bring our costs down. And so then we can reach out to more public schools and charter schools all around the U.S. Um, and when we, when we kind of grow our network like that, the service we create kind of becomes more powerful. As more schools get involved, there's more dialogue, there's more ideas about how to get involved in different communities. We're not only building a service, but building a network of classrooms and students who can just talk about ways to connect with different countries and different cultures. And that's kind of one of the most powerful things that we're doing that we're most excited about. Um, yeah, so I think... Um, yeah, we, we can probably brush over this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is just from the slide before. So we'll talk a little bit about what we've done so far. Um, last summer, oops, last summer we spent 
uh, a year. Last summer, we spent, last summer we were in India uh, doing our pilot program, and we worked with Teach for India, as we mentioned, an organization similar to Teach for America, and we got six of our prototype devices across their low-income schools in New Delhi. And so we paired those up with classrooms in the U.S. And one of them was my alma mater, the University of Chicago Lab Schools. Another one was Prospect Elementary High School uh, here in Oberlin, Ohio. So it was great to see how kids were using it just a few miles away from us. I mm -hmm. uh, really saw what the interaction was like there. Um, I just want to yeah, ask sure. uh, Simon's question. Yeah, so Simon, we're, uh, for next year, we're going to be focusing on third through eighth grade. So it's mostly upper elementary, you know, and then lower secondary. But we do think this is really going to be even more valuable for kids in high school because they can have an even more meaningful connection. So in the long term, we see this more as a upper elementary through high school program. Right. And so we learned a lot about how this service should work and kind of why teachers might get involved, why they might fall behind in their videos, and kind of the best ways to incentivize them to do things that we that film the videos. And so that's why we built our app that certain way. We learned a lot about how to make this thing an effective program. So this summer we're going full time um, with all that experience behind us. And we're trying to sign up up to 50 classrooms to enroll in our program for the next academic year. One of those schools we're talking to uh, is Marymount. Um, so we're, uh, as, we, as we find more schools to join our program, we're getting around uh, you know, a lot of money in subscriptions. And so one of the things we communicated to our investors is that we already have $30,000 worth of classroom subscriptions uh, paid for the new year. So that's a great figure for us after only a few months of targeting schools. Um, and also, no, 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 okay. I think you've got it. Uh, next year, we're also doing some exciting things with uh, international organizations. Um, so we're selling a lot of new pilot programs in different countries, including Ghana, Senegal, and Haiti. And one of the most exciting programs, we think, um, is our project with USAID. They have a lot of workers in Ghana right now trying to teach and improve health education around malaria. So what we're going to do is send them our devices, and they're going to try to bring devices from village to village to try to teach and improve the awareness about malaria and how to treat malaria and how to avoid it. Yeah, and, and Barbara, you make a great point. Uh, the teachers we're working with in India and the U.S. are fantastic teachers, and they really want to bring new experiences into their classroom, but there's just no platform to allow them to do it. So that's also part of the reason why we moved away from supplying the teachers with their own content, because they're motivated enough to find the content themselves. It's just they have no platform to deliver it on. And, yeah, it's a, it, it's a great point. Um, so briefly, we'll go over who we are and what our team is comprised of. Um, we were founded by five Oberlin College students. Um, you can see the two faces on the left are these two guys. Um, and, you know, we've experienced starting our own businesses. Um, I myself have started a few businesses on our campus. We've also worked with in, uh, international organizations, especially in South Asia. And we also have a lot of experience developing hardware and software tools. We're all computer science kind of geeks on the side. Um, a lot of us are economics majors and politics majors. Um, so there's a lot of experience on board. Yeah, and Barbara and Simon, you both make a great point. Our next hire is definitely a girl because there's way too many guys on this team. So, yeah, no, that's, that's something we have noticed and something we really want to address um, as we go full time and actually start, you know, employing people. One of the groups actually pitching uh, for this competition is an organization called Built by Women. I'd look it up if you're on your computer, which of course you all are. Um, and their, their mission is to try to get more women involved in STEAM industries, and that's science, technology, engineering, architecture, um, and let's see, yeah, mathematics. Yeah. Um, and so I talked to her for a long time just now, and she would talk to us about getting more women involved in our projects. So we're really excited about that opportunity as well. Um, there are some women on our board, on our advisory board, though, as you'll see. One of them you may recognize. Um, she's part of this chat right now. <laughs> it's Lucy Gray. Um, but we're backed by a really extensive network um, of support, especially from you guys. We can't uh, explain much. We appreciate you guys listening in and helping us out here. But um, we, we're backed by um, experts in ed tech, a lot of social entrepreneurs, and a lot of educators who have experience, and not only in the U.S., but in South Asia as well. Um, and so kind of building our network of advisors and fans of what we're doing is kind of one of the most important things we can do because it helps us grow our social impact faster. Oh, that's great. Yeah, I didn't know you knew Colin, Barbara. That's, that's really great. I think she means... Oh, second from the left. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Colin's great, too. She's former Teach for America and helped us on this. Yeah. So um, as a final point, you know, we have some uh, milestones and fundraising we're approaching for the next uh, year. Um, to make us operational for a year after we graduate, we need to raise some money, and that's about $250,000 of seed capital. Uh, that will help us manufacture 250 professional-grade devices 
So our initial prototype that you saw in those pictures is kind of a hand-built prototype, but we want to get really manufactured, strong, and durable prototypes to use for the next year. Yeah, Lucy, that's a great question. We're still figuring it out. It might be Chicago. It might even be Oberlin. So, you know, as we get closer to graduation, we'll have a better idea of exactly where we'll be based. And uh, we're also looking for immediate funding to cover our initial device tooling costs, and that's what we actually competed for today. So we're glad to be able to say that we can partially pay for those costs uh, after today's win as well. And, uh, and that's it. Yeah, definitely cheaper than New York City or Silicon <laughs> Valley. Exactly. We're talking about Chicago, uh, Cleveland, and Oberlin because there's a great uh, tech scene there. Um, it's much cheaper, and we have a lot of connections there um, just from our experience. So if you have any questions, we'd love to answer them. Yeah. Um, please, please. Yeah, I think our computer is Hey, guys. Henry, isn't there a bunch of capital that's available for you out of the business school at U of C now, like Hyde Park Ventures or something? Have you talked to anybody from there? Uh, I'm not familiar with that program. I have not looked into it, so um, I have to plead ignorance on that. But if there is, that sounds like a great opportunity. I'll definitely look I into that. I think there's some startup y thing down in Hyde Park. I'll look around and see if I can find the name of it. But I want to say it's like a UFC based program for startups. So I'll look for it. Great, thanks. And thanks a lot, Peggy. That's really nice of you to say. Uh, we really appreciate that. We're, we're, we're still in school, but um, we're working, you know, on most, this most of the time. So it's kind of a, a triple play of, as we were as we in the Merriman, we're trying to get money, trying to get more classrooms enrolled, and trying to graduate on time. So <laughs> I'll see which happens and which doesn't happen, but hopefully all three will happen. <laughs> um, any other questions at all, please feel free to write in. You guys can contact us. Um, on our website, lumina.org, there's a contact form there. Our email addresses are also, uh, I'll type them here below. Um, and feel free to reach out to us or forward someone else our materials, our YouTube video. Uh, we're trying to enroll schools right now and find investors. So kind of the most important people you can forward to are friends you know at schools or administrators at schools or wealthy individuals you know who might want to invest in a social enterprise like this. Uh, we'd really appreciate any sorts of those connections. So uh, criteria for school being involved, um, again, uh, there's no specific criteria as long as the, the teachers, you know, care about the project um, and agree to be spending time doing this throughout the year. We ask teachers to spend about an hour per week uh, recording and planning videos and talking to their students about what they learned from the interaction. So that's the only criteria we have. Um, and then in terms of support, as I just mentioned, you know, any sorts of uh, connecting us with your network of schools um, or uh, other people with money or, you know, no, I, I any sort of contact with you. Yeah. yeah. And I think another another thing we didn't talk about, but I think it's good, is uh, part of part of raising money, you know, we're not just trying to do it through investors. We really value going through people who will see the see the merit of the idea. And towards that we'll be doing a Kickstarter in about a month. And really? that I think is gonna be a great way for us to really get the word out about our project. So we're hoping, you know, not not that necessarily to support us with money, but getting the word out through the Kickstarter, and we'll make sure to inform everyone here about that as well. So we're, we're still fixing the date, but it will be sometime in, in a month. We're hoping on March 2nd, but we'll let you know if that changes. Zach, that's a, that's a great question um, about the curriculum, and it's still something we're working on. You know, none of us are really experienced educators, but we kind of have a sense of what we want to get out of the program, and then beyond that, we want to leave it up to our teachers who have a better sense of exactly what they want. But kind of a baseline curriculum we're working on is based around starting with um, how we're the same. So students talk for the first couple of weeks about how they're the same, you know, what classroom values they share, you know, what they do in the morning, and all, like, all of that stuff. And then it goes on to how we're different and, you know, where they're from, what their environment is like. And then the final component of this baseline curriculum that we have started to work on is, um, okay, that's great for in the classroom, but how do we take this outside the classroom? And that's probably the part that I'm personally most excited about is when teachers can take this experience and, and also with their kids show how the country is or the location is outside of the classroom. So, in, Eric, in, in the case of Marymount, I, I, I can see, you know, one of your teachers filming the subway. And, and I think for, for the students in India, that's going to be a mind-blowing experience. Absolutely. And likewise, for your, your students, them seeing a local market in India is going to be is going to be pretty great. Um, 
might have missed a few questions. There's one about the Caribbean. Uh, getting the Caribbean, yeah. So yeah, that's that's interesting because um, with one of our with one of our schools, we are looking into doing a pilot pilot program with this uh, orphanage in Haiti, and that's really interesting because um, again, uh, it's it's a, it would be an interesting um, language opportunity. The students in Haiti are speaking French as well as uh, Haitian Creole, so the kids speaking French. Uh, can in the U.S. the French learners can be practicing their French with the classroom in Haiti, and likewise, um, the kids speaking English uh, here in the U.S. can help the kids who are learning English in Haiti to do that as well. Yeah, great, that's fantastic. That's, that's absolutely great. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, if any of you want to, you know, stay connected with us. We don't have an email list set up, unfortunately, right now that you can join on our website. But if you want to just stay connected, just send one of us an email. I posted them up above. It's just yeah, Henry at Lumina.org and Prakash at Lumina.org. Yeah. Also, uh, through our website, I think we, we have a contact form on the website. Right. So if you send us a message there, we'll make sure to get back to you. We'll add you to our email list. And we'll le reach out to you with our Kickstarter date and all the other information, that, anything you really want. <laughs> um, but yeah, definitely. Any more questions, we're happy to answer. I'll make sure we didn't miss any. <laughs> Unfortunately, we were busy all day uh, hearing pitches and competing for this pitch competition, so we couldn't really join in with the rest of the program uh, in the Student Technology Conference, but it sounds like an amazing idea um, that Eric is really spearheading and Marymount's really doing pretty revolutionary things. So we're fantastically excited to be partnering with them um, and to be doing a few uh, trials of our pen pal program in their school. It's really exciting for us. Can you say to the students when they have school? That's a good question. That's a great question. Um, you know, we can definitely describe our program in Oberlin, too. Um, oh, Lucy does deserve kudos. Lucy has been yeah. utterly phenomenal for our organization. She's made so many connections for us, um, not only with schools, but with other advisors. Um, you know, we had a phone call with some really people high up in ed tech a few days ago, and it was all because of Lucy. So we can't uh, appreciate, we can't say how much we appreciate it enough. Um, but you want to maybe plug it in? Is there yeah, I will look for that. Well, okay, I'll describe on. a few things about our program. So uh, for high school students who want to do entrepreneurship, you know, we actually Prakash and I were the co-heads of the entrepreneurship club at Oberlin. Um, and at Oberlin, you know, it's a pretty progressive and liberal place. And so when people think about entrepreneurship, they think about evil business and, you know, it's kind of a stigma against that. And so one of our roles and ideas at the club was to make sure that people thought you can do some social good with business and entrepreneurship as well. Um, and so one of our main ideas about that program and that club was to kind of promote the idea that you can do good things and you can do artwork and you can be creative with entrepreneurship in your business. Um, and that's definitely a possibility for you. Um, in terms of the program at Oberlin, so there's this thing called Launch You that we have, which is a month-long accelerator program for January where businesses can apply with just an idea or develop a business and get a lot of feedback from alumni and other people connected to the school and kind of develop their business plan, learn how to talk to customers, uh, do everything required to start a great business. Um, so that's kind of how we got involved. We actually won the competition last year, and this year they kind of changed the prizes, and so we competed again, and we won again this year. So we're two-time winners. Um, and that's really exciting for us. Yeah, we're going to play our computer in really briefly, so <laughs> bear with us for a minute. We'll just stand down. So yeah. We're in a school hallway right now. <laughs> um, so the question was, getting a tour of the, uh, the, the fantastic conservatory building here at Oberlin. <laughs> Oberlin's not just the college, but a uh, world-renowned conservatory as well, so that's what you're seeing here. Um, there was a few questions we missed. Let's go up. Um, oh, yeah, why education? Um, right, so why did education appeal to us? I think I'll let Prakash talk about that initially. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah, I don't know. That's, that's really interesting for me because, you know, coming from Nepal and, you know, I actually came came to the U.S. from Bangladesh, and it was such a stark contrast with the experience I had in Bangladesh and the schools there versus what technology had done to schools in the U.S. And particularly, you know, the things that really inspired me were Khan Academy and Coursera and seeing 
what they've done, not only in higher ed, but also in K-12 schools all over the country. And that's kind of where this journey really started is we wanted to, I, well, I wanted to see if there's a way to bring um, these tools to classrooms in need, you know, back home as well as um, other parts of the developing world. And after that, we really got, you know, that's, that's kind of where my obsession started with EdTech, and that's really how I've gotten involved. Um, and yeah, and then since then, it's grown, grown beyond just providing tools for classrooms that need them to really making a connection that's missing in, you know, we realize this is a connection that's missing for practically any classroom. So we, we really saw the value in providing this and the impact we could potentially have. So yeah, that's, that's kind of how we ended up there. We're not, we don't have a background in teaching, so it's really, we're really lucky to be working with, um, you know, Lucy and other people with great backgrounds in teaching. And we hope that's going to really be what helps us uh, make sure we're making a positive impact in the classrooms we go in. Definitely, Lucy. Yeah, I mean, we are the internet generation, so, you know, having the ability to connect with any classroom, any person around the world has kind of impacted the way that I know I've grown up. Um, you know, when I was studying at lab school, I started speaking German at a very young age, and my German teachers were always my favorite teachers. Perhaps I'm all I know, you know, Lucy. Um, and so German had just a humongous impact on me, and I loved reading about different short stories in, in German and different cultural in the film of Germany. Um, I got a chance to fly to Germany for an uh, exchange program twice, and so that really shook up my whole worldview. Um, so education and kind of different language barriers and cultural connections have always been kind of central to my education from a young age. And so when I met Prakash, and we were really great friends, and we were starting this project, it was like a no-brainer. Well, I love, you know, entrepreneurship and social entrepreneurship and social impact. I love education. I love foreign languages. Let's team up and make this happen. And so it's been a great time ever since. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Oh. <laughs> in Chicago. Went in over there. Yeah. I need to talk to Frau Zemmel again, Lucy. It's been, we haven't connected in a while, but I, I owe her a call for sure. Wo means where in German. That was the joke. Nein, Deutschland. Nein. <laughs> a little bit of a German uh, nerd nerd session. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, that's okay though. Yeah, any more questions? We're happy to answer anything else. Please don't be afraid to ask. <laughs> We're friendly guys, as you can tell. <laughs> <laughs> you hope so. You hope so. <laughs> We're tall, but don't let us scare you. You can't tell here. Um. <laughs> We definitely have some materials. Um, we have a one-pager pamphlet that describes the video pen pal program, and we also have a video uh, that describes kind of the history of our organization um, that's on our YouTube channel. You can just search for Luminet. Um, and we also have a one-pager. Again, it's a PDF you can send to any teacher or administrator that you know. And so if you want to have that, um, just email me. Send me an email. I'll get it back to you in, in an hour yeah. when I get home. Um, again, my email is henry at luminet.org. Um, I'd love to send it to you. Um, yeah. Yeah, and if you guys haven't seen it, we also have this great video on YouTube that shows kind of how the program works. And you can see, like, instead of, I think, video, you know, it's like a thousand pictures. So you can see the program in action. Absolutely. And if you just YouTube Luminet, it should pop up. So definitely check that out if you want to really see how this works. No, to answer your question, Peggy, um, there's a lot of uh, issues around privacy, for, especially for younger kids um, around the U.S. studying. So whenever you sign up for a video pen pal program, the videos that you record and send to your partner classroom are private um, and secured, encrypted on our servers. So the videos are only viewable by the classrooms in that one relationship. Yeah. Exactly. Privacy is a biggie. We take it very seriously. Yeah, and, uh, the you know, the only time we use a video in this case, you know, the example with Michaela and Nishu is we ask permission to use just a particular part of a video just for, you know, dis description purposes, but it's never an umbrella permission where if we right. do get permission, it's for one very specific cause and it's not for all their videos or anything and teachers can always take it back at any time. So there's no, we, we really uh, want to make this as private of a relationship as possible.
with some questions. Did we miss a few questions? Do we make a lesson for that's a great idea. So uh, some of our good friends uh, in the ed tech space, a company called LearnZillion, and they kind of do something very similar to that. And so, you know, we haven't thought about that exact model of, you know, kind of finding great videos and sharing them with other classrooms, but it's definitely something that works, and we've seen it work with other organizations, so we're definitely open to it. Um, that's a great idea, actually. Oh, great. Yeah, Peggy, uh, just to answer your question about students creating the videos, it is for our younger kids, it is oftentimes teacher-led, but the part of the process of making the video is really driven by the students. Um, when I was in a classroom, one of our classrooms in New Delhi, basically the teacher devoted you know, a solid hour before actually recording it for the students to come up with the ideas of what they want to show. And then it was really just the teacher's the one recording it, but it's the students who brainstorm and come up with their ideas and even you know, come up, I mean, usually they are the ones who come up with what they want to say. Yeah, yeah, cool. I, I definitely think the curriculum would be very different in high school because the kids are capable of, you know, much deeper understanding. And I think, I, I personally believe that when we do venture more into high, the high school space, the experience will be even better for the, for, for the students yeah. that are involved. Um, and like as Henry touched on, just the aspect of taking it beyond just the classroom to real social benefits and working together, you know, in extracurricular projects, I think that would, that's going to be really powerful. And just discussing real world issues, you know, we've all had the pen pal experience of writing a letter about, you know, maybe your favorite, your pet dog, or maybe you talk about some larger issue facing your country or your small town. Um, and, you know, with the internet, a lot of kids know a lot about, about a lot of world issues. So when you have high schoolers connecting who might have internet at home or some things like that, they can really talk about the larger global issues facing their countries and maybe the U.S.-India relations or U.S. and different countries relations and talk about it candidly in a video. And when it's a video interaction, it's so much more engaging and exciting than just a written pen pal letter where you can actually see the person you're talking to and kind of, you know, identify with them more clearly and they're your own age. So it's just it's a much more engaging and inspiring experience. Exactly. Yep. Definitely. That's something we're definitely pushing forward. And, you know, again, we're starting with this K-12 cultural connection, but that's only the beginning. And we really want to push for as many you know, connections as we possibly can, which includes language development, talking about world issues, and that kind of education as well. Yeah, and, and I think the, the great thing for us is, although we are not educators ourselves, because we get to work with all these great teachers who have all these great ideas, um, it really increases what we can do and get out of the program. So, for example, with the pilot program, we had a lot of cases where one teacher had a great idea and it worked really well, and what we do is we share this with our other teachers because, you know, it, it allows other teachers to see what works and what doesn't work. And when you guys are giving us all these great ideas, we can also incorporate them exactly. into what we do. Exactly. We're growing our network of great teachers who want to help and design this thing and help make it as good as it can be. Yeah. Absolutely, Lisa. Yeah. Including your third graders. They can educate other third graders, too, and do it in an exciting way that's easy to do and... That's what we want to, we want to make <laughs> yeah. happen. Any more questions? Again, we're, we're open to answer anything. <laughs> Thank you again all for being here. Um, really appreciate your time. You know, it's great to have voices to hear us, especially from all around the world when we can tune in through this kind of great Blackboard service. Oh, that's great. Great, Lucy. Thanks a lot, Eric. Thanks, Eric. Thanks for you know, letting us know about this and saying this up. It's, it's been really a lot of fun. Yeah, please do, Lucy. I have to call her. I guess she'll see this in the video. But as far as I'm I'm going to give you a call. I owe you a call. Thanks a lot, Barbara. Yeah. Thanks, Lisa. Thanks, Lisa. Thanks again, Barbara. <laughs> Definitely, Lisa. Lucy. Yeah. So, uh, again, you know, our email address is just henry at luminide.org or prakash at luminide.org. Our website is here. Um, there's a YouTube video you can watch as well. If you want that one pager about the video pen pal program, just write me an email. I'll get it back to you as soon as possible. Um, and otherwise, just please stay connected with us. We'd love to, you know, make us make you part of our team and our network and grow along with you and include you along the way. So thanks a lot. Yeah. Thanks so much, guys. Ganz toll.
Dankeschön. <lacht> Auf Wiedersehen. Bye-bye.